Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, this is Professor Ahmet Aysan. Uh, I am the coordinator of the PhD program in Islamic finance and economy. Welcome you all. Uh, we will be together today with Dr. Delal Essali and our student Isa Al Mansuri. It will take about an hour. Uh, we will first start with the uh, MSc program in Islamic finance and economy. And then we will continue with the PhD program presentation. And we will give the floor to our student Isa Al Mansuri. He will talk about his experience and he, uh, he will also probably give some insights about how he gets into the program. He has a very interesting dissertation thesis. So he might want to share uh, his dissertation thesis with you as well. So I would like to welcome you all and uh, I will give the floor now to Dr. Dalal. Uh, and at the end we will get the questions. Uh, I mean, we have relatively uh, good team in here, uh, three of us, and we will be more than happy to answer your questions. Uh, so without further ado, we have about an hour. Uh, we are planning that our presentations will last about an half an hour such that we will have plenty of time for your questions and answers inshallah and again welcome you all uh, nice to have you and dr delal floor is yours thank you uh, good evening and assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to this um, information session about the uh, msc in islamic finance program and phd in islamic finance and economy program uh, so, as Dr. Ahmed mentioned, we will first start with the MSc presentation and then followed by the PhD presentation. And I think the idea is to give you an overview about the Islamic finance programs we have at the College of Islamic Studies, uh, because some of you would want to have the opportunity as well to pursue um, uh, both programs with the aim of uh, having a PhD after um, at the end of their studies at the college uh, so that shows you which areas you should focus on and then the structure of both programs and that helps you put perhaps in your um, uh, planning of your future studies uh, using islamic finance um, now to start with uh, so we'll have of course uh, more time for the um, for the q a session uh, we encourage you all to uh, post your relevant questions in the q a tab uh, and then so you have that in the lower side of the WebEx screen. Uh, so you, have, you can see three dots. So you click on that and then you can see the, the, uh, the Q&A box. Um, please direct the questions to all the panelists so we can see the questions. And we will address, uh, we'll try to address all of the questions at the end of the session, if not some of them during the uh, presentation. So just to leave more time for, for the questions at the end. Um, so, of course, those of you who are using as well um, the their phones, so they are, who are logging in from their phones, I can see some of you, uh, that's also possible. Uh, so you can also interact um, with with us through your phone. So you can see there is the Q&A tab and also you can feel free to post your, uh, your questions. Um, now, to start with, actually, why, and I'm sure those of you who are in this session, they, they already uh, have some idea about Islamic finance or they want to position themselves now in, the, um, in this discipline because, again, uh, it's a growing industry. Uh, today, the size of the Islamic financial industry is 2.4 uh, trillion US dollar, and that is expected to grow to more, about 3.8 um, trillion US dollar by 2022. So that is a very uh, uh, fast growing industry with a double digit growth rate every year. Um, and we can see now interest in the in the industry, even by uh, non Muslim countries, we've seen, for example, a number of, uh, of conventional institutions also uh, either tap in the Sukuk market for those of you who are not familiar with Sukuk, which is the equivalent of um, of uh, bonds, but based on, uh, on Sharia principles. And also in terms of um, 
of presence in the global financial industry, we see also more synergies with the other segments of the industry, specifically following the various um, developments when it comes to climate change, when it comes to uh, the sustainable development agenda, but also uh, post COVID um, uh, pandemic, where there is more emphasis on how to mobilize uh, resources in an ethical manner. And therefore you have a huge interest in, in Islamic finance. And you see that also at the level of a number of international institutions where you have uh, task forces or committees working on how to how to um, uh, basically benefit from the variety of instruments that can be mobilized or the, the financing that can be mobilized through Islamic finance. Now, uh, this gives you a bit of a background of why, uh, why are you here today and why have you made this decision and actually uh, this is the first step of the process of being part of this industry in future or for those of you who want to pursue again a PhD and uh, perhaps have a career in academia in Islamic finance where there is also uh, an interest in the field even in uh, international uh, universities. Now, uh, the what we offer at HBKU, again, uh, we offer again the two programs. So you have the master level, which is a graduate program. And then, of course, you have afterwards the PhD program, which my colleague Professor Ahmed will, will discuss later. Now, the environment itself is intellectually stimulating. So um, if you have been already to HBKU before, or if you have seen the College of Islamic Studies from the uh, uh, beautiful architecture to the infrastructure that is provided to our students, the variety of, um, of uh, information sources that we have at our library, uh, to the databases, etc. Uh, that gives you a very uh, stimulating environment to develop your uh, research, but also to develop your skills in the field. And what we also try to do is to integrate both academic and research activities and that's there is also considering recent emerging uh, issues in the field uh, and we will have a chance to discuss about that later when we uh, look at the overview of the research activities now um, the importance also of the uh, the, uh, the degree is that we integrate uh, contemporary issues that even though you discuss of course the theory in every courses and all however there is a huge focus on also integrated contemporary issues and that is to prepare our students for immediately integrating the job market and being equipped with the necessary skills to uh, to contribute either again in academia or in the industry. That's why we will see that also in the variety of fields or the variety of uh, courses or activities that we um, uh, expose our students to during their studies. Um, now, in terms of the other the other critical aspect, particularly for those who are uh, either in the industry and they want to build on their skills or they want to uh, add on additional expertise in Islamic finance or those who are fresh graduates and they want to um, uh, start a job in the industry. And of course, we have uh, throughout the, uh, the studies from the selection process, the admission process to the graduation, there is, um, uh, we also have advice advisory for our students in the sense that we advise them on their uh, research, on their also uh, career aspirations if you have, if they have particular interest in specific segments or field so that they can equip uh, themselves with the necessary skills to prepare them for uh, that particular area they are targeting to, uh, to work in. Now, that means that we have the practical experience is uh, achieved through a variety of, of initiatives. Uh, number one, we have in our courses themselves, of course, we integrate emerging issues, as I mentioned, and there is a practical aspect in the true case studies, uh, through recent, for example, uh, industry research, through research that the students need to conduct themselves. But also we invite, we frequently invite uh, industry practitioners to our program where they share their experience and they talk about the achievement, they talk about the latest development in the industry. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, we are very active in terms of organizing uh, events, conferences, workshops, seminars that usually uh, invite uh, industry uh, practitioners um, uh, uh, who are expert in their fields, in the various fields of the Islamic financial industry, but also with exposure to other segments of the conventional finance industry. And the idea is that to uh, blend both, uh, I mean, uh, uh, skills and, and then to equip 
the students with again the necessary skills for in in variety of fields um now if we look at uh, basically uh, the program philosophy itself and what do we aim to achieve and that is done through the how the program is structured now the program itself as you may have seen in our brochures or in our websites for those of you again who are interested in the msc program it's a two years program and of course it accommodates um the schedules also of uh, practitioners those who are already working in the sense that our classes are in the evening time uh, so from uh, four to uh, seven and that the idea is that to also accommodate the schedule of um, of professionals so the majority of our students are professionals in the financial industry in regulatory bodies in the uh, private sector uh, but also a number of uh, government institutions and that enriches it that itself enriches basically uh, the our courses in terms of the discussions in terms of uh, uh, teamwork when it comes to uh, project presentations etc and also the contribution to our events so uh, the program so you have basically three three semesters of classes whereby in each semester you need to take about nine credit hours so three about three courses every semester and and then the last semester usually is the focus on the thesis and the thesis is the nine credit hours and that helps the students to uh, basically uh, um, uh, work on a topic of course they have the freedom to select the topic they want to work on and they have they're provided with the necessary guidance uh, by our faculty and they have the opportunity to work during their thesis, usually during the second year of uh, of their um, of the program. Now, the three first semesters that I mentioned, we have uh, co core courses and then concentration courses. And again, for those of you who have explored the program through our website or through our previous events, uh, you've seen that we have um, uh, two uh, concentrations. Okay, so and here, uh, I mean. Um, don't have to confuse you with the details of the courses. Of course, you have our details and we'll be more than happy to uh, follow up with you regarding the uh, content of each course or the content of each concentration. But broadly speaking, we have two key concentrations, which is Islamic banking and risk management, and then Islamic corporate finance and asset management. Now, before the students go into the concentrations, which usually happens, um, we start the, the second semester of the first year, they have to be equipped with the foundation skills when talking about finance and economics in general and specifically islamic finance and economics and this this is why they come and they jointly take the uh, core courses we have uh, right now five core courses and then afterwards they go into the concentration and this is we have the two separate groups uh, the islamic banking and risk management concentration and then the uh, islamic corporate finance and asset management and then of course both concentrations will equips will ha will emphasize on particular skill set that prepares them for a specific uh, let's say segments in the industry although actually both concentrations will enable students to work in any segment they, they, they wish to in the industry so in the islamic banking and risk management concentration there is more focus on uh, for example uh, financial analysis because students if they are positioned at the uh, Islamic financial institutions, they would need to perform like credit analysis, financial analysis, uh, decide on financing and uh, lending decisions, etc. And of course, on the legal and regulatory aspects and risk management aspects. Whereas in the corporate finance and asset management concentration, there's more focus on uh, issues with regards to asset and fund management. And of course, uh, with more focus on some of the uh, Islamic corporate finance aspects. And the students can choose from a variety of electives. Uh, this again, depending on their career aspirations and with the guidance again of the uh, uh, program coordinator and of course the uh, various colleagues, the faculty at the at the program now uh, when uh, talking about the other important aspects is research activities and this is where actually you are uh, exposed to the latest or the latest developments in the global financial industry and specifically also to the islamic financial industry and i'm sharing here in the screen just some recent topics that we focused on we, we're currently focusing on which are uh, emerging and if you look at those of you who follow basically the financial news or the uh, developments in the financial industry in general uh, you've seen there is a lot of, there are a lot of discussions about fintech especially after the uh, 
COVID-19 pandemic, uh, where uh, a lot of services actually were offered uh, in a digital format, and therefore there's more focus on fintech. <clears throat> You have green finance, and I spoke about the uh, global mobilization for uh, climate change mitigation and for sustainable development. <coughs> Uh, pardon me. And of course, other aspects like sustainable development, um, circular economy, uh, corporate social responsibility, Islamic social finance, and many other uh, innovations when it comes to financial structuring, structuring new instruments, new products that again achieve uh, social, economic, and environmental impact. And uh, examples of that are some recent events that we have conducted recently. Uh, we have here, for example, uh, we conducted a conference on circular economy uh, last year, which was uh, exploring actually um, the new developments in the field and how can we leverage on some good experiences and bring them to the Islamic financial industry. Um, we also organized a, a big a conference about Awqaf and again this is focusing on Islamic social finance, one of the key institutions when it comes to mobilizing uh, funds for social uh, activities and very recently uh, a workshop, uh, an international workshop where we brought international speakers and where we had a chance to talk and explore latest developments when it comes to green finance and how can we apply some of these strategies in, in Qatar particularly and in uh, other countries, maybe in the OIC uh, region. Um, and again, uh, some additional uh, aspect that I wanted to share with you regarding the practical experience is that our students have a good interaction with the industry. And these are just some of the um, events or some of the uh, activities that we've conducted with the industry. We're also actively participating in international uh, financial competitions. So I can share here examples are the CFA uh, Institute Research Channels, where our students won the second place last year. Uh, Similarly, we had our students participating in competitions organized by Qatar Stock Exchange and uh, other uh, organizations or other uh, strategic institutions here in Qatar, like Qatar Development Bank. But also, uh, as I mentioned, through our courses, we also have frequently uh, guest speakers from the industry where we take our students to visit the industry and have better exposure to the, the activities and operations of Islamic financial uh, institutions. Uh, now, with this, actually, I will, uh, I think, give the floor to my colleague, uh, Professor Ahmed, to talk about the PhD program, and I'll be happy to answer any questions about the, the MSc program, so please feel free to uh, share your questions in the Q&A uh, box, and I'll be happy to address them uh, after uh, Professor Ahmed's uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Adela. I, I am lucky to speak just after you, because these are uh, quite similar programs. And whatever Dr. Delal has mentioned uh, about the applications, student engagement with the sector's academic life, actually we can say very similar things for the PhD programs. So I will not repeat the similar uh, parts. Uh, I will try to be a bit quicker. Uh, and then inshallah, we will have more time for question and answers. Uh, this is... Uh, so right now I can share my screen or I should go on with your slides. Uh, uh, you Delal. have the, you can actually go through the slides. You are the presenter right now. Yeah, How? Do, uh, but I try to. Uh, uh, okay. Yes, on the left side, you can, you can see the, uh, the arrows and then you can just uh, uh, move to the next slide if you want to. I don't see them interestingly. Uh, Okay, left hand side. Okay, some, okay, that's great. So we are learning. Thank you, Dr. Da. Now I am the host. Okay, let's go from here. Uh, this is, uh, I, I was at the beginning of this program as an external uh, evaluator. Uh, at that time, I was not at HPQU, but uh, the program was very well designed. So I was very affirmative of the program because it contains the local and the global together. We have Qatar National Vision, uh, Vision 2030, and this encompasses sustainability, people-centric approach, and all those things are actually embedded into our courses, people, economy, environment, and culture. The main purpose is to make the, uh, to improve the human capital, not just for Qatar, but for globally. 
So uh, from the beginning, it's a very well taught program. Uh, I hope you will have the time to go over the each and every courses, syllabuses, and so on. You will see that they are all well taught and they are uh, matching exactly to the needs of uh, Qatar National Vision 2030 and also for the global vision. Especially, we need this sort of perspective for Islamic finance programs because these are still emerging fields. I mean, it, Islamic finance, Islamic economy programs have been around in the last 20 years, 30 years, but uh, even the ideas have been around much earlier, but still these fields are uh, changing and it is changing with the uh, most recent changes in the practice. For example, we didn't have SCOOC for about, let's say, 10 years ago, but now we have SCOOCs, we have different forms of SCOOCs. We have sustainable bonds, green green schools. So all those things need to be reflected, and we are trying to be more, uh, not just a theoretical field. Definitely, we have quite strong background in theory. But given that this program is more an evolving field, so we emphasize the practice as well. So I can tell you in that sense that it is quite a well taught department. But you you are applying for a PhD program, and we all pass through the stages. Uh, definitely, you can look at the, our web page and you can see the details. But I would like to emphasize some important points. First of all, HPQ is a different place. I am relatively new here, and one of the reasons why I uh, decided to come to HPQ it's a quite an international environment, and there is an Islamic view that. Uh, any solutions that we produce are not just for Qatar. It is for all the Muslim uh, countries, for the humanity. We are providing some solutions for the global economy, for the humanity as a whole. And Islamic finance and economy uh, needs that sort of approach. And this is somewhat reflected in the number of countries uh, represented in our PhD program. This is just the PhD program. There are similar figures for the master program. It's a quite an international environment. This is, I believe, is quite important because when you, uh, inshallah, complete your PhD in uh, our program, you will have friends from all over the world. They will bring their practices from their countries. They will uh, make presentations in class. You can share your ideas. And some countries are more advanced than the others. Some countries might have different experiences with Islamic finance. So it's a great opportunity to have friendship and also to learn from uh, your friends while studying uh, your graduate in your graduate program. Also, one other reason that you might want to choose our PhD program is that most of our students are working. I mean, this is good and bad. I mean, this is good for uh, this is not good for us for the professors because it will have been much better if you all work with us for the research papers uh, for certain projects. But at the same time, this is good for students because you can work in the banks, you can work in your regular places, and at the same time, you can continue doing your PhD. And this becomes more of an increasing trend uh, in recent years because it is not always wise idea to uh, leave your job for three, four years, and then uh, do your PhD and go back to academia or go back to the private sector, because in the meantime, you will lose some time. It will be definitely much better, especially for our Qatari students, if you are the resident of Qatar, I believe it's a very good option, because uh, this is this our programs, both at the master and the PhD are designed accordingly. Our courses start at 4, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., one day is off. So you are taking about three courses or four courses in a semester. In the PhD program, you are taking at most three courses. So you can do both. You can work and you can at the same time do your PhD. And again, I mean, this is an increasing trend. Uh, it is not anymore the case that uh, only academics, very few academics are doing their PhDs. It is other way around. Even the practitioners are doing their PhDs. It's a good signaling mechanism. Uh, it's, I'm sure it will help you to promote in your uh, jobs, existing jobs, and even uh, to find better jobs. So there is this sort of an impact we are expecting at the end of the your PhDs. 
uh, and uh, right now 80% of our students are working, but the 20% seems to be not working, but actually they are working because they have scholarship and uh, they, uh, they are writing their papers. Uh, so if you apply for a scholarship, uh, we will make sure that you are working for sure. Uh, another aspect that we have kind of a motto, you will work, you will study, but we want you also to inspire the others. We want you to interact with your friends. Uh, our courses are quite interactive. You do many presentations, you write papers, because this is somewhat different from the uh, uh, your undergrad courses, for sure. I mean, it's not just the content, but you are expected to produce something. You have to think independently and you should have an impact in the society. This is the idea, especially we emphasize in, a, in your PhD dissertations. You should come up with your own ideas. Definitely your professors will help you. You, you have very distinguished supervisors. Uh, very distinguished faculty members to help you in finding right topics. But the main purpose is not just to get the diploma. The main purpose is to really have an impact in the society, have an impact in academia by writing papers. For example, you are required to have two published or uh, accepted uh, journals towards the end of your PhD. This is, this is a very good criteria because then you have really impact by publishing a paper or you have a different idea, unique idea, uh, worth publishing. So this, uh, it is not just you are the passive receiver of the knowledge, but you are going to inspire, you will affect other friends, you will impact the uh, literature, inshallah. That is uh, one of our uh, purpose. And these are all in line with the Qatar national vision. Uh, you know, Qatar HPQ is a part of Qatar Foundation and Qatar Foundation has a uh, foundation has lots of good things uh, in different parts of the world and HPQ is one of them. So there is this sort of a general vision. Uh, and we are all in line, we are designing our courses all, all in line with this objectives. Uh, and the good, another good thing about our program, there is a good balance between the coursework and research uh, and the transformative philosophy. Uh, it is mainly actually more research-based PhD program, 33 credits of research hours you need to take, I will show in a bit. And we have only seven courses uh, at the PhD. This is deliberately done and this is increasingly of a trend globally. I mean, you will focus on certain areas, uh, you will have some specialization, and especially in Islamic finance, this is needed. But uh, your main outcome will be all coming out of from your research. And we are trying to be not just a distinguished uh, program locally or regionally. We wanted to uh, our Islamic finance and economic program, uh, more of a, one of the global uh, center of excellence in providing PhD programs, because this is an, again, newly developing field. Inshallah, you guys will start the PhD programs and you will graduate and inshallah, we will be proud of you with your articles, with the impact that you make in the financial sector or in the society. So that is our uh, vision. That's why we always develop our program with the needs of the uh, practice. It's a multidisciplinary program, and that is also in general, I'm sure some of you might be thinking why you should apply to Islamic finance and economy instead of just applying to conventional economics. In conventional economics or finance, you will take many core courses. These are all important but you may have less flexibility in choosing your research topic. Uh, you might be interested more on Islamic side of the finance or economics, but you may not be able to study this in conventional economics and conventional finance. Uh, we are much more interdisciplinary. Uh, Islamic finance and economy is under the College of Islamic Studies. We have ethics courses, we have history courses, we have international relations courses. You will see one of our elective course that we out of the seven courses you can take from other departments. We even allow this because we really believe in this interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary nature of the program. Uh, so you will learn finance, economics, but in your research part, you can choose uh, depending on your uh, consultation with your supervisor, definitely. Uh, you can choose very contemporary topics related with the life, related with your uh, current practice, current occupation. 
uh, we emphasize the social entrepreneurship. We emphasize social uh, and governance concerns. Uh, I believe these are all the topics that would be difficult to be studied under the conventional economics of uh, economics and finance or in other social disciplines. So this multidisciplinary perspective we believe is quite important. And this is also reflected in the structure of the program. For example, definitely the finance and economics is occupying the main fraction of the uh, program, but we emphasize the quantitative skills, qualitative skills. We emphasize the Sharia dimension. It's not just economics and finance, but Sharia dimension is important. We emphasize entrepreneurship and uh, we start increasing the weight of sustainability issues because uh, more and more uh, sustainability issues are getting into the sphere for Islamic finance as well. Not just because of the sustainable development goals, but even the conventional economics are uh, economics and finance topics are emphasizing more of the sustainable plan. We are reflecting this. Uh, recently, we have a change in our program. Uh, we changed the content of uh, some of the courses. So we are constantly improving our program for the sake of catching up with the most recent development. And we are lucky we have faculty members coming, have a industry experience uh, with very good publication records, uh, with uh, coming from a very distinguished places. And uh, this is a very big advantage, especially this is important for the PhD programs because in the PhD program, independent thinking also uh, very much influenced by your supervisors with the colleagues you have with your professors, and you will have very rich environment uh, in that sense. Uh, we have in our program five core courses, uh, as stated here, and two elective courses. You uh, and that's why uh, in the first year you take three courses in the first semester and the three courses in the second semester, oftentimes, and then one uh, more uh, course left for the fall of the second year, and then you take the qualifier exam. So it is relatively actually quite a flexible program that you can take three courses and you can work or even we are encouraging our students to start writing their papers early on, even the, uh, from the first, uh, starting from their first years. So you have relatively uh, of a good flexibility in your timing and uh, uh, to writing papers earlier and to finish your PhD on time, even producing many papers uh, before graduation, such that it, you start uh, with an advantage even after your PhD, inshallah. So there are two electives, and again, one of these electives could be uh, from the other departments in in the college. And this, all those courses are 21 credits. As you see, the thesis credit are, uh, is 33 credits. So this is more of a thesis-based program. So your outcome, independent thinking, your publications are very much emphasized in the program. And for that, definitely, we are not going to be just teaching. We are going to be providing you research environment. This is one good example. For example, we have a Center for Islamic Economics and Finance, and this is one of their products, uh, edited book on fintech, digital currency and the future of Islamic finance. I take this to here. This, uh, this is a part of a conference uh, outcome for about three years ago. As you see, fintech is a quite a popular topic right now, but uh, it, uh, College of Islamic Studies, Islamic Finance and Economy Program has foreseen this, even organized conferences, workshops, I and mean, this is just one uh, example. And then we have even outputs out of this. So we are quite uh, following the market. Uh, we are quite interested in the most recent development. And because this is, important for our students. If you are equipped with the most recent development, you will be more competitive in the job market and you will produce better papers. You will remember us well and then we will remember you well by seeing your success, inshallah. This is another example. Each and every year we organize different conferences and this year it will be on, again, FinTech Industrial Revolution after COVID-19 and there is an emphasis on uh, sustainability. For example, we are uh, helping our PhD students also present in this conference such that they can have their papers published later on and they engage with the distinguished professors, academics coming from all over the world. So it's a quite a research environment uh, that you will be finding yourself in. Uh, we also 
again, we follow the most recent development. For example, banking and finance is moving towards more on the fintech side. Uh, we have good collaboration with uh, different institutions. We, this is an event that we organized with Beitul Meshkura, one of the uh, Islamic finance uh, consultancy companies in Qatar and globally also they are well known. We organized one event with them on fintech. Uh, we have one guest speaker from uh, UK, uh, Professor Hussein Abdu. He made a wonderful presentation and our students enjoy it and also it was open to the public. Similarly, we also uh, join in different events, not just in Islamic finance, but even for some this conference, we are uh, one of the co-organizers of this conference. It will be on management information system because this topic is also rising and I will be talking about the FinTech issues. So we are encouraging our students to attend these conferences. There's another conference, I didn't put it here. Uh, it's going to be also in March. Uh, it is organized with uh, Malaysian University, NCF, uh, Sanawei, and there are some other universities involved. And we are also uh, one of the uh, participating uh, universities, one of the co-organizers of the conference uh, on Islamic finance and economy. It's a very well established conference. This, this year it will be the 11th Islamic finance and economy conference. So we are also encouraging our students to be taking part in this research environment. So it is not just the courses, but uh, we encourage our students to take part and we are helping them to publish their articles to present their work. And also, uh, it is not just the courses. Uh, there are certain things we uh, learn all together. I mean, we believe in this cooperative learning. Uh, and there is one good example here. We have a FinTech working group. It is a relatively informal group. Uh, the students are voluntarily involving. We are also inviting sector participants from Qatar from various parts of the world and we are listening different uh, practitioners and academicians leading in this field. Uh, for example, we listen uh, one presentation by uh, Mehmet Kiraz from UK on uh, the blockchain issues on cryptocurrencies. The, uh, next week we will listen uh, the uh, fintech experience of Malaysia and Dr. Mutas uh, Abijay from ISRA, they recently prepared a report on fintech, explaining the Islamic fintech in Malaysia, and we immediately learned this and invited uh, him, he is a good friend of us, uh, invited him to share his findings with us, with our students, with the, this, the members of the fintech group. And uh, also we have some other professors will be joining us from the practitioner, from the practice side, and also from the academic side, we have very distinguished uh, speakers. And one good thing is that our purpose also in this graduate programs, you are not just going to learn from your professors, you are going to learn from your peers, from your colleagues, from your uh, friends, you will learn from the presenters coming for this sort of uh, seminars, uh, conferences, uh, and we emphasize the practical side. The environment that you are in is quite important for your success, for developing your world vision. We have very distinguished uh, students also. Some of our students are working for very big banks. We have uh, deputy general managers of the banks. Uh, we have students working in the different ministries. We have students coming from the different backgrounds from different countries. I mean, these are all a big learning opportunity. And we observe this, really students are learning from each other, they are helping each other, and even they are developing projects uh, in addition to their coursework, their uh, kind of startups, kind of uh, projects together. And this is what we are aiming to. Uh, I believe you should choose your PhD program, not just based on the courses. More important, the environment is important. Environment that you interact with your professors, and even the environment that you interact with your colleagues. Right now, uh, this COVID-19 has actually shown us this uh, in, uh, intimate connections. Uh, the, I believe that in our PhD program and also in our master program, you are enjoying this. You are going to enjoy this because uh, we are helping a lot to our students. We are providing the right process such that uh, they will develop their skills. Uh, I did my PhD in US. It was, I mean, most of the time quite difficult to meet with the supervisors. I mean, you have to get in advance uh, appointments. 
uh, you are only allowed to have a half an hour in a week or so. I mean, I, I was lucky. My uh, advisor was quite a nice person. Uh, I still admire him. Uh, uh, he was very helpful to me. But in often times, it is quite difficult even to interact with your professors. But Alhamdulillah, we are quite lucky. We have very involved professors. They are writing papers with their students. They are helping uh, uh, their students in all senses. And also, we are lucky. We are also learning from our students. We have practitioners. We have uh, students with very good backgrounds. And we are also learning from them, especially just consider this fintech issues. I mean, these are relatively new topics. Many things are not in the textbooks. Many things are in practice. So we are learning from our students working in the field, our, from our students who, are, who have a special interest in cryptocurrencies, on fintech crowdfunding sort of issues. And one of them is definitely Isa Al Mansuri. Isa Al Mansuri is one of our best students. Uh, he was with us in MSc. He graduated from MSc. He likes it, I guess. That's why he is now continuing with PhD. And we are very lucky to have him in our program still. Uh, and uh, for example, Isa has a very interesting topic uh, that he is working on. I will not give the clue, but I will give the floor instead to uh, Brother Isa Al Mansuri. Uh, and then, inshallah, we will get the questions. Uh, Isa, it will be great if you can first introduce yourself and then uh, then you go on, inshallah. Please, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum, uh, everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ahmed. Thank you, Dr. Dalal. Bismillah, uh, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah. I am uh, Isa al Mansouri. Uh, I am a lawyer. Some of you may ask, uh, why would I, a lawyer uh, be studying uh, Islamic finance, whether in the uh, master's uh, stage or the PhD stage, because I'm uh, studying, uh, uh, the, I'm a PhD student in, in the Islamic finance and uh, economy uh, program. Uh, let me tell you that uh, a number of my uh, uh, colleagues uh, who were uh, studying with me in the master's uh, program were, uh, uh, in addition to their various uh, fields uh, the, uh, of uh, professions uh, they came from, they were from various uh, academic uh, backgrounds. Some of them were, uh, uh, for example, one of them is uh, uh, an IT uh, professional. Alhamdulillah, uh, once he graduated, he is working on uh, fintech projects. I uh, work right now in the Ministry of Commerce. I'm a legal advisor uh, there, and uh, my understanding of uh, Islamic finance has definitely uh, helped me uh, uh, view uh, uh, financial transactions in light of uh, Islam and the uh, Maqasid al-Sharia. Uh, and uh, since uh, my work, for example, in the ministry involves uh, policy making, uh, legislation, uh, things along this line, uh, my knowledge of uh, Islamic finance and what should be uh, is uh, helpful in shaping uh, the uh, direction of uh, policy, for example, in, in uh, public institutions such as uh, the place I work uh, in. Uh, a few of uh, like uh, my uh, colleagues, uh, as I've told you, not only uh, from uh, uh, various uh, academic background, but also from uh, various uh, sectors. For example, one of them was from the, uh, was the head of uh, Progress uh, for uh, Ryan Bank. One of them was the ex, uh, uh, Zaka fund, uh, the, the official Zaka uh, fund uh, in Qatar. He was the ex president. Uh, we've got uh, like uh, people from the central bank. Uh, you are going to be exposed to many uh, backgrounds, uh, uh, cultures, uh, nationalities, uh, rich uh, discussions, uh, those. Uh, uh, professionals uh, who attend the masters and the phd actually give uh, professors uh, 
a hard time. Uh, sometimes uh, we are sorry, professors, for doing that uh, because uh, exposure to the uh, professional uh, side of things uh, can can clash with the, the academic uh, side of things, uh, and that's why uh, classes. Uh, if you want to uh, get a sense of what. Uh, uh, classes uh, in HPKU uh, uh, like uh, look uh, or, or or feel like uh, they are hated with the uh, uh, debates, uh, discussions, uh, constructive uh, and uh, uh, otherwise, and uh, uh, they uh, question and challenge uh, some deep uh, uh, conventions. Uh, but, uh, for example. Uh, I joined actually the um, master's program because of my uh, sincere interest in in, in solving uh, the uh, riddle of uh, riba uh, addressing, for example, the question: Why would uh, a state, a modern state, need to rely on the conventional uh, financial uh, system? Is there an alternative? Is it possible to adopt Islamic uh, finance and not only uh, like uh, for transaction, but also in the public sector uh, and uh, in an economic level? Uh, I'm uh, indeed uh, glad that I've uh, found uh, good answers for those um, queries. Uh, moving uh, on uh, to the PhD, uh, my uh, uh, intention here is to give you uh, a glimpse of what it is uh, like uh, to study, for example, uh, in the PhD uh, program. Uh, well, uh, of course, uh, we've got uh, a number of uh, excellent students, some of them, again, not from a financial background. Since uh, the PhD uh, program in uh, HBKU, uh, the uh, Islam finance and economy program focuses not only on Islam finance but also on uh, economy. This gives it much flexibility and gives us, of course, the students much uh, flexibility in choosing uh, and pursuing uh, uh, topics. Uh, for example, uh, some of my uh, colleagues in the PhD program are engineers. And from that perspective, they are pursuing sustainability uh, uh, like uh, inquiries. Uh, some of my students uh, uh, work in the central bank. They are pursuing uh, rather regulatory uh, topics. Uh, I, uh, for example, uh, am interested in fintech and how. Uh, uh, in particular, uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies play and get along with the uh, Islamic finance uh, paradigm. My topic uh, is uh, about, uh, uh, I'm writing uh, essays on uh, blockchain and Islamic finance. You may be asking, why would I, would my uh, dissertation topic be called essays because as a phd student uh, you can uh, write a number of uh, articles instead of a, a, a monologue or a single like uh, uh, paper uh, so i have uh, taken the route of writing uh, articles the one i'm uh, most fascinated about is the sharia ruling on uh, bitcoin I expect a number of you may be uh, uh, fascinated by such a topic. Uh, uh, for example, I, I'm, the title of my uh, paper is are, crypto are cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and others, are they haram in Sharia? A critique. Uh, I am uh, going uh, harsh against uh, Sharia scholars. Uh, uh, who uh, ruled that cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, and otherwise are haram. Uh, you may uh, have uh, strong views uh, uh, in this regard. Uh, some of you may uh, uh, 
jump out of your chairs and say, no, Isa, no, you cannot, first of all, you cannot challenge Sharia scholars. I will tell you, uh, we can uh, go uh, a long way uh, in challenging Sharia scholars here in HBKU, by the way. Uh, we can uh, have deeper knowledge than many Sharia scholars because we uh, get a strong uh, foundation in uh, uh, Sharia uh, and uh, quantitative uh, methods uh, such as like uh, econometrics. Uh, statistics and uh, we get uh, uh, deeper uh, exposure to uh, uh, asset management, uh, corporate finance. Such, for example, uh, we uh, uh, get to understand uh, short selling options, uh, the, the financial derivatives uh, in the conventional uh, side of things. And we get to like them, uh, uh, um, not like them, uh, to appreciate their strength and why they are liked in the conventional side of things. So we need to appreciate our like uh, enemies or or, or uh, the things we want to challenge before we challenge them. Uh, uh, some of you may not uh, be familiar with the what I'm talking about, but. Uh, uh, Islamic finance uh, and uh, Sharia scholars usually are against uh, short selling, uh, derivatives, uh, and the like. But uh, many uh, in the public are not uh, deeply uh, uh, involved uh, in the background uh, leading to such uh, uh, opposition by Sharia scholars. So, yeah, uh, I am. Uh, um, somehow challenging uh, Sharia scholars. Uh, I've got uh, Sharia scholars uh, with me uh, on my side, by the way, uh, my uh, professors, uh, my uh, supervisors. I thank them, I thank them uh, very much. Uh, they can, uh, they, they are enlightening me, not only in the Sharia side of things, but also in the like uh, uh, economic and financial uh, side of things. Uh, so I uh, yeah, just hope that I've given you that uh, glimpse into what it is like to be a student here in uh, HBKU studying Islamic finance and possibly economy. So uh, thank you all. Uh, I do not want to take uh, more time you. from your questions and answers. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Isa. Uh, I believe the ESA's dissertation topic will be very well cited because he is working on very interesting topic. There are not many Islamic law people working on cryptocurrencies. You know, I mean, uh, many people after Elon Musk, uh, especially in the last week, they are discussing about the Bitcoin cryptocurrencies and we are following the market and uh, we are following the market through our students also. Uh, and we are also following the most recent developments in the finance, the GameStop event. I mean, we all, for all those things, actually, we have certain, uh, that all those events have certain implications for Islamic finance. Uh, and I'm very happy to see our students working on these topics. For example, in addition to ESA, we have one, one of our students working on the uh, blockchain applications uh, in Qatar. One of our students, uh, she is working on Zakat collection and distribution through blockchain technologies. One of our students is working on crowdfunding. So these are relatively new topics. Uh, and inshallah, if you're interested, especially in the, this aspect, uh, it will be quite helpful. In the meantime, we were uh, trying to answer the questions uh, that you have. But if you like, uh, I couldn't read all the questions, but I don't know whether the attendees are allowed to speak out. Uh, Sorry, Dr. Ahmed, I think yeah. most of the questions are uh, related to the PhD program, and I think we have relatively like about 10 minutes left. Okay. Uh, but there were questions regarding mainly, uh, I think, uh, some of them regarding the background. So uh, some students with, uh, like, if they have a background in engineering or a background in conventional finance, can they apply to the PhD program? And then, if there is any um, need for uh, publications before applying to the PhD, 
So I'm just uh, looking Thank at the questions. Well, actually, yeah. I was not being able to read all of them, so it will be great if you can ask me like this. So let's go from there. Uh, actually, these backgrounds are very important. Uh, I mean, if you are have, coming from engineering background, if you have some interest in uh, Islamic economies, uh, this is great uh, because we believe in this multidisciplinarity. Uh, in order to apply for PhD, you don't need to have any publications. Inshallah, you will write your papers when you join. Uh, I mean, it is quite difficult to expect from the students to have publications after their MSc degree, uh, definitely. I mean, there are very few students actually having publications after that. This is a big plus, by the way, in, a, in application, but we are not expecting it. So you can apply without publications with different backgrounds. They're all welcome. Uh, Dr. Does it answer or is there anything that I miss, Dr. Uh, no, I think it's fine. I think you addressed there was another question whether in the PhD there is more focus on finance or on economics. Uh, yeah, actually we are emphasizing both aspects because uh, our uh, faculty members, first of all, is diverse. I mean, they are both, both in economics and uh, finance. We have uh, people coming from the practice also, uh, in addition to the academic publications and work, uh, both are emphasized. We don't have particularly say that, okay, Islamic finance is more emphasized or uh, uh, Islamic economics is more emphasized. It is not like that because uh, most of the PhD program is based on the research. As I mentioned, there are only seven courses and the seven courses makes 21 credits. Remaining uh, 33 courses are research hours. This is the hours that you spend with your supervisor. So uh, some of our students, for example, are working on circular economy, uh, on uh, social finance, uh, on uh, Islamic law related issues. I mean, these are also very well emphasized. So we don't say particularly that Islamic finance, because it depends on what you work with your professor. We give the fundamental courses, but after that, we leave it to you to specialize. So this is also increasing trend globally. Uh, I mean, there are relatively fewer courses and more emphasis to research. And HPQ is a research university. So that's why uh, both are emphasized, especially on the research side. And also courses are equally weighted, actually. We have both finance courses and economics courses equally weighted. Uh, um, I think there was a question about the placement of PhD students. I think we, we still have, uh, we have, we don't have yet the first batch graduating, perhaps to talk about that, but please go ahead, Dr. Ahmed, if you want to. This is, this is a very good question uh, because at the end, our PhD program's best indication is through the placement. But we are lucky here because most of our students are already well placed. Uh, uh, Brother Isa, for example, is very well placed. He's very good in his job. But inshallah, we are, it is not just a job placement, but at the same time, we are trying to improve the uh, existing capacities of our students. We would like to increase their competencies. But uh, that is also another reason we have requirement, publication requirement of two, uh, at least two. And uh, most likely you are going to work with your professors, your advisors, and you, you will try to publish in good places. If you publish in good places, you will find good jobs in academia or in the private sector. There is an increasing emphasis given to practitioners with uh, PhD degrees in Islamic finance or in conventional finance. This becomes increasingly the case. When you have the PhD, it is not anymore that you just work for academia. You work for international organizations. You work for the World Bank, IMF, for uh, Islamic Development Bank. So we will be quite encouraging our students on this, and we, we do our best to place them. Uh, as Dr. Dalal, for example, in our, uh, mentioned, in our MSc program, we are introducing our students with the sector participants. I mean, this is a big chance. And also, it is even a big chance. For example, in some of our courses, we have deputy general managers of the banks. Uh, we organize conferences, and very distinguished speakers come out. So these are also quite influential in uh, this sort of uh, job placements, and I'm sure uh, we will have very good placements uh, coming out of from our first batch of students, inshallah. 
and from um, yes i think they, there was a question about the uh, uh, research areas i think we both spoke about it briefly uh, we don't impose per se research topics on students we discuss with our students so we give them guidance uh, but as we mentioned in the presentation we uh, we focus on emerging topics so i think we have a good example uh, uh, from um, uh, Aisa, who is with us today is working on again uh, emerging issues when it comes to bitcoins etc we have also students working on circular economy on uh, uh, green finance on blockchain on uh, islamic social finance on esg issues on csr issues so we try to integrate all of these uh, emerging issues and because we have a research methods course also uh, and that gives the opportunity to students to first equip them with the necessary research methodologies and tools they can use in their research but also they are exposed to the research areas of all the professors and to all the emerging topics uh, and of course through the other events we organized frequently uh, it gives them also good exposure about emerging topics and therefore they have a good exposure to a variety of topics and emerging issues that they can select from um, i think there was another question about the um, uh, for international students yes they come with a scholarship i think the question about whether they can work part-time or no i think the scholarship is enough to cover the cost of living uh, I believe, uh, but I think uh, my colleagues from the admission team will be in a better position to talk about the details about the scholarship and then whether you're allowed to work or not. But if you are international student, you come with uh, actually with a scholarship and I'm glad my colleague uh, Azza is here with us so she can mm -hmm. uh, talk. So Azza, the question is, if, they, if you have an international student, is the scholarship enough for the cost of living and are they allowed to have a part-time job when they are here? Yeah, I think it's it's enough. Uh, but uh, students they are able to work within the Qatar Foundation area. They cannot work outside the Qatar Foundation, so they can help. Like they can work an assistant researcher, or uh, they can apply through uh, the student affairs. They have like a system where the students they can apply to help in other universities or uh, work in uh, different departments like libraries, uh, registrations. So it is within the education city, not outside education city uh, there is also one question about the gre i guess the yes this GRE is still, yeah yeah gre is still mandatory uh, or gmat and uh, students they are able to register and do it online uh, uh, so they don't have to attend uh, physically and that's for the uh, PhD only, just to clarify, uh, as the right, uh, not for the yeah. MSc. Yes. Yeah, GRE uh, is only required for PhD, all PhD programs in HPQ. Okay, so for the MSc, so it's only the, uh, sorry, Professor Ahmed. Yes. Uh, so the, for the MSc, it's only the language requirement, right? The IELTS? Yes. In case yes. they haven't yes. done their bachelor degree in, in, in English. Yes. Yes, okay. but for the GRE, we also, in, uh, uh, you know, encourage the students if they can do it for the master degree, it will add value for their yes. application. Exactly. Uh, there was another. For, Go ahead, yeah, Professor. Let, let's, Sorry. let's uh, for this GRE uh, thing. Also, because of COVID nineteen, I guess last year we accepted the students by having a different evaluation uh, after the interview. Uh, do we continue the same uh, this year? Uh, so far, it's uh, they didn't uh, announce it yet uh, because GRE is, you know, it's available online. So we request from the students to apply online and do it unless anything that we received from the provost office, then we will inform the students. Uh, there's another question uh, uh, as I'm not sure I, I didn't understand it well. Is it about the program or but the, the student is uh, the applicant is asking for international students who applied and are waiting for response from the admission team? If they yeah. get the admission, would they be able to change the optional subject? I'm not sure if they mean the the program. Uh, maybe you can just <laughs> add some insights on that. Okay, now, uh, uh, you know, their application will be distributed based on what they have submitted. And they will be interviewed uh, based on the program and the college. And they will accept him uh, based on that. Changing the program, uh, it can happen, but it's, uh, you know, it. it it, it will take different channel and it should be approved by different, uh, you know, the new program, whether they already selected or not, if, especially that they, for international students, they have limited numbers. So if they already selected three students, it will be too hard to move an international student from program to program at the beginning. Okay. 
And I think there was another question about, uh, I think, the uh, the process, the admission process, so when the international students get to know they are admitted, and then uh, some insights about how the visa application works and all. It's, uh, you know, the admission for international has been closed on the 1st of February. Uh, we have thousands of applications. I can say that we have over 10,000 applications for HBQ. Uh, we are still in the process. Uh, a, uh, hopefully, uh, students will start to receive, uh, you know, the 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 decisions uh, during April and May. Okay, uh, perfect. So, uh, so yes, if you have applied, then you just need to be patient. Again, uh, we're given yes. the number of applications. Actually, there is an admission process. So, uh, the shortlisted again, if you meet the minimum requirements, uh, then of course you will be invited for an interview with an academic committee. And from there again, you will be informed with the uh, with the decision afterwards. For the GRE issue, just to clarify uh, one thing for international students, many international students applied for the PhD. They did not submit their GRE, but they already registered for it. Uh, we are informing the students that they can still submit the GRE till the end of March. So they still have one almost two months to provide us with the GRE so we can uh, submit their application to the faculty. Okay, perfect. Uh, there was a question. Uh, uh, so the uh, I got my master degree in English, but the country is not English speaking country. Should I attach the TOEFL or the IELTS in IELTS into my application? If if he studied in English, he only has to provide a letter from the university that he completed his study in English. Uh, fair enough. It will be it will be enough. Okay, thank you. I think these are the admission questions. Thank you very much Aza, for being with no us. Worries. Um, yes, the other questions, I think we addressed all of them. Uh, there was a question about the disciplines. I think as uh, Professor um, uh, Ahmed mentioned earlier is uh, actually we're open. We invite you to apply actually. So there was a discipline from uh, interest in development finance. That's very relevant actually for the MSc and for the PhD because we focus also on finance and development. Uh, we spoke about circular economy issues, green finance, sustainability uh, issues. So it's very much relevant to development finance. So we, we invite you to apply. Um, and uh, uh, the practical experience, how do we consider it? I think for the admission is also um, uh, considered by when we uh, at the level of the admission committee. So that's part of the things that are assessed, actually, your academic experience, your credentials, your uh, uh, the, the, the scores you provide for GGRE, for the IELTS. All of these are considered actually in the uh, in the review process of the application. Um, and there was a question, maybe, uh, maybe as it's better that you address it about distance learning. Distance learning. Um, I know we are still uh, actually uh, we will we follow a blended learning mode, which is a combination of uh, face to face, but online, and then of course uh, um, uh, remote uh, teaching. But uh, I think at this stage, uh, can we do we have insights on maybe uh, next year, uh, fall semester? Is the question clear? As that, so there was a question about distance learning. So are we? Yes. Yes. Are so, they going to continue uh, distance, distance learning? Distance learning as students who are coming from outside and they have a distance learning uh, uh, degree. No, uh, they mean because of the pandemic. Will the courses yeah. be online in the fall? Yes. Um, so far, as far as I know, that just for this semester, it will be yes. like this. Hopefully, by next year, everything will change. Yes, <laughs> I, I mean, the answer is no one knows, actually. I yes. don't think anyone in the world would answer this question because I we have no so. clarity. Yes. yes. So, yes, we did follow the uh, distance learning, uh, the two semesters this year, and part of uh, last year's semester, uh, part of last year's, last year's semester because of the pandemic. But again, this is not a decision you can make months in advance. It really yes. will depend on how the uh, pandemic situation will evolve in the country. Alhamdulillah, in Qatar, things are getting better. But of mm. course, uh, this is something that is decided at the university level. Uh, and we just we update our students, I mean, uh, continuously on how things will evolve. So um, so I don't think anyone would be able to share, uh, confirm that at this stage is too early to talk about that. Also, there was one question. Uh, you might have an MSc in economics or finance, and you may apply to PhD for sure. But uh, in the meantime, you might want to also apply to our Islamic finance uh, MSc program because definitely 
once you study uh, the uh, master program with us, you will have more chance for the PhD because we will know you better. Uh, we will get recommendations from your professors. So in case you might want to apply both at the same time, such that if you are really interested in Islamic economics, probably it could be, uh, I mean, it depends on the number of applicants and so on. There are many uh, different reasons uh, that you may not end up being in the program, but at least if you can apply both, you will diversify your risk and uh, inshallah, uh, you will not be uh, uh, left out. Uh, so it's better to apply both. Actually, yeah. yeah, and the question about the classes, I, our classes are offered uh, in the evening, as we mentioned, so uh, from four to seven. Um, and this applies to both the MSc and the PhD uh, program. Uh, the GRE, no, we do not offer the GRE at QF. Uh, so uh, I think the GRE you have to find online. I mean, depending on the countries where you're based or even in Qatar, you have like uh, exam centers and all that offer that. I think it's easily you can find that uh, online. Uh, uh, so we we do not offer the exam at at Qatar Foundation, uh, uh, right? As I don't, we don't have that. Uh, service, yes. We actually we are we we uh, we are just holding the uh, hosting the 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 GRE, but the students okay. should actually register online in the main international uh, website, yes. and they will select to do it here. That's it. So we are just hosting the the things, uh, not the the exam itself. And that's, of course, it's for local students. I believe for yes. international students, it's better that they do the process uh, yes. Yes. in their countries. Okay. Uh, I think also, we have, yes, go ahead. Well, there's one question. What is the acceptable GRE grade? Uh, I mean, we don't have a minimum, uh, but you, you, you have to take it and we will evaluate it depending on the other applicants and so on. But we don't state the minimum um, as far as I remember. Okay. Yes. Uh, it was a question, I mean, for international students who got previous scholarship from Qatari universities, how much, what is their chances basically to uh, to get another scholarship from HBKU? Uh, there, there is a big chance. We have several students who've been actually in Qatar University and they apply to HBKU and they continue as an international student. Yes, mm -hmm. there is a yes. good chance. Again, it will depend on the uh, applications we receive. How competitive is your application compared to the others received? So this is the main criteria rather than looking at uh, previous uh, scholarships and all. So we, we invite you to apply actually. And the, the committee uh, decides on this and, and each and every cases are specially carefully analyzed. Don't worry about it. So uh, you better uh, apply with a strong file for sure, uh, but uh, be sure that each and every candidate is carefully considered. Yes, I think we answered all of the questions. Uh, there was just one question, maybe Dr. Ahmed, about accreditation. Uh, and I think you answered already the question about the job market for the PhD. We still have our first batch of PhD students will uh, hasn't yet graduated because we launched the program um, two years ago. So uh, we will have our first graduates, I think, uh, Dr. Ahmed, in two years' time, maybe the first yeah. batch, some of the Inshallah. students. Inshallah, in two years' time, even earlier, probably, some of the yes. students are more advanced. Uh, with regard to the accreditation, uh, the accreditation process is followed at the university level. There are, you know, different accreditation uh, agencies. Uh, for Islamic finance and economy, we don't have internationally recognized accreditation agencies. Uh, we have AS, ASSP for management. Uh, we have some international accreditation agencies in other fields, uh, but we are uh, preparing for this sort of processes, uh, but we don't have particularly one accreditation agency for Islamic economics and finance anyway. Uh, but, but we are all following these processes in the meantime. But you can be sure that because there are, I mean, everybody knows the number of uh, Islamic finance and economic programs. Uh, we had one in Darham, it is closed, uh, unfortunately, in uh, the PhD program. Uh, the, there is one uh, invested a lot by the Central Bank of Malaysia, INSEAF, which is, I believe, it's a very good program still. Uh, they, they have done a lot. Uh, and there are some. Uh, Islamic finance programs in Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, in Turkey, in several different countries. But it is not that difficult to place uh, 
HPQ among this, and we are quite competitive among all these alternatives for sure. So that's why it is not just accreditation, but what is more important in the job market, what is mo most important in reputation is everybody knows the programs anyway uh, after your graduation. And uh, CIS, HPQ is quite well standing among the competitors, I can say. I think we have pretty much addressed all questions. So uh, uh, we invite you all again to uh, to apply for those of you. I think the as uh, Ms. Azza mentioned that the uh, application for international students is already closed, but I think local students still have until 1st of March, if I'm not mistaken, mid, right? Mid of March. Mid -March, mid March, yes. So uh, we invite local students to apply. And of course, for international students who are interested, they're invited to apply next year. Uh, and continue, of course, attending our events. Uh, currently, with the pandemic, we have a number of uh, most of our events are hosted online. Uh, so you're welcome to to attend our events. Thank you very much uh, for all Thank of you, you. For attending. Also uh, to Ms. Az Ezza and uh, Dr. Dalal. Uh, our student Isa Al Mansuri, thank you very much again for your contributions. So you can reach us anytime. By the way, I mean it is information sessions are short, but uh, uh, you can uh, send an email to us. I, I write my email here, aisan at hpqu uh, edu, uh, and uh, our first yeah is it okay? So a a Ison HPQ at EDU. You can look at the web page also and you can send us emails. We will be more than happy to follow up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you very much. I see you. Okay, have a good evening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you again.